safety, ground, and neutral line. This is the documentation of the experience of a hobby project available in video and in written form made with the hope that it could be helpful to others. But any comment that could help me to improve my practice is welcome and appreciated. While playing with old electronics, safety is always a difficult challenge, and very likely, there will never be a fully safe practice. This video contains annotations about ground connection and neutral line, especially for an environment where the mains does not have polarized sockets. For the sake of safety, one should consider the regulations first, but also personal habits which might expose one to some particular risks more than to others. Therefore, the examples that appear in this video are only incomplete solutions that could be helpful to my particular practice and not necessarily to the one of others. Each one should consider carefully their own needs and personal risks. Therefore, if you are following along, you are doing so at your own risk. There are a couple of types of electrical outlets that, while having a ground connection, are unpolarized, meaning that the orientation of insertion of the power plug cannot be predicted, and therefore one cannot know which side is hot and which is neutral. These electrical outlets are those of type L and type F used mainly in Western Europe. There are devices that work properly only if they are connected to the mains with a certain polarization, or that would be unsafe if connected in the wrong way. A typical example of the latter would be a hot chassis radio. It would be helpful to put some sort of indicator that could tell if the plug is inserted in the wrong way. In this case, if the expected neutral line is, instead, a hot line, the LED would become bright. Obviously, the LED might be burned or the ground connection might be missing. To make sure that the plug is indeed inserted correctly, it is necessary to try both ways first, to verify that the LED lights up, and that that happens only in one direction, the wrong one. An additional safety measure to prevent connecting a plug with the wrong orientation could be obtained with a relay that would open both lines from the mains if the supposed neutral line is instead hot. However, there would still be an instant in which the relay has not yet reacted, and more importantly, the relay might fail. A typical example in which proper orientation of the power plug would be important is a step up or step down auto transformer, especially if it has polarized electrical outlets. Here is the example of a step down auto transformer. On the left side, it is polarized correctly with the mains, on the right side, it is reversed, and both output lines are elevated compared to ground. The same happens with a step-up auto transformer. If it is not polarized correctly, both output lines are elevated compared to ground. The following accelerated clips show the process of adaptation of a small step-down auto transformer, adding an LED to warn against a wrong polarization. First of all, one should notice 
that the output socket has a ground connection, which is not connected. In this case, the output socket was also connected in the wrong way by the factory, making the supposed output neutral line always elevated, compared to ground. This is the occasion for fixing this issue too. A small hole is made for inserting an LED indicator. The LED will be connected between the output neutral line and the ground. However, the value for the resistor in series is calculated for the maximum voltage that could be read in case of reverse polarization.
a proper power cord with ground connection is installed. A preliminary test is made measuring the resistance between the inputs and the outputs. The output socket seems to be too loose. Therefore, some super glue is applied. Then, the output voltage is measured between the outputs and the ground. When the power plug is inserted with the correct orientation, the LED remains dark and only one output terminal on the socket is elevated compared to ground. Here is another output transformer under test, providing the correct output voltages. This larger auto transformer was modified including the LED indicator and a relay as described in the previous section. Also two fuses were added, but F2 should be rated for a higher current than F1 or it would blow more often. In this particular implementation, the relay might have to stand a significant stress. 
due to the presence of the autotransformer coil, depending on the instant in which the power plug is inserted, compared to the phase of the mains, when the switch of the relay intervenes opening the connection there are times in which a big spark would be released, significantly reducing the life of the contacts. While testing electronics that work directly connected to the mains, it is a good practice to put an isolation transformer before it to avoid the chance to let a current traverse the body of the operator between the ground and the item under test. This is all good except that, if something of such an electrical device under test is connected to the external ground, if the operator touches something else of the circuit of this item under test, which has a significant potential compared to ground, the operator would be traversed by a current. In other words, connecting the external ground, the item under test, is no longer isolated. This is what happens when a grounded piece of equipment is connected to the item under test, and that is why some people prefer to keep their equipment not grounded, even if it was made for being connected to the external electrical ground. Please notice that, if there is an RCCB, or residual current circuit breaker, either before or after the isolation transformer, it would be useless in case of current flowing to the ground from the secondary winding. Therefore, one should choose their own safety policy, considering the risks that every choice implies, but also considering the regulations and the responsibilities in not respecting them. In my personal practice, I prefer to connect to the external electrical ground all the pieces of equipment, that have a metal cabinet, even if they were designed and built in the 1950s or before, originally without a ground connection. But, of course, it is much safer using equipment that was designed for being fully isolated, especially if it is powered from batteries. While using grounded equipment, it is important to define what is the ground on the device under test, but before actually connecting the ground of the piece of equipment to it, it would be advisable to verify that that is not elevated compared to the external ground. Otherwise, there is the chance of releasing a big and scary spark, very likely with consequences also for the piece of equipment that was incorrectly connected, not to mention other worse scenarios. Under the circumstances, it would be better to connect the elected ground to the external ground testing first if that is safe. A ground test device could be designed to verify the absence of a significant differential between the external ground and the chassis before actually making the connection to ground. This is a personal solution that would allow one to see if there is a current flowing to the ground. And if there isn't, the ground connection could be activated. In the off position, if there is a leakage to ground, one or both the LEDs should become bright. Under the circumstances, the electrical ground should not be connected. In the on position, the elected local ground is connected straight to the electrical external ground and the LEDs are bright to warn about it.